Okay, in this video, we're going to go through an inventory, adjusting inventory, adjusting the, you know, the cost as well as the quantity, how to do that in QuickBooks. In case you haven't heard it enough, in QuickBooks, you never want your inventory to go negative. Okay, what happens is it skews your cogs, it has some negative results for you. So if you run, if you look in your items list here and you see some negative numbers, you actually want to go in and adjust those negatives prior to when they went negative. Okay, so there's a couple ways to do that. Uh, now, first things first, you always want to run a quick report and see when did they go negative. So this went negative on 830 of 2011, that's this year. I can probably go back and fix it before it went negative because I haven't closed out this year yet, okay? Now, if this was 8.30 of 08, I need to be careful adjusting that inventory because I don't want to affect prior year tax returns, okay? So what you need to do is usually, well, there's a couple ways. You can run prior year trial balances, export those to Excel or print them, then go in and adjust those inventory items prior to it going negative, and then create journal entries to true up your trial balance to what it should be. Okay, again, talk to your bookkeeper or CPA, help, let them help you do this, but you don't wanna just go back to prior years and adjust things because that will affect what your numbers should be based on your tax return. All right, but I'm just gonna show you going back in and uh, altering this or adjusting this so that it never goes negative here. So up here under vendors, we have inventory activities and we can adjust quantity slash value on hand. In older versions of QuickBooks, if you wanted to adjust the value, there was a little box down here in the left-hand corner and you would check it and that would allow you to, to adjust the values. In this newer version of QuickBooks, it's actually under the adjustment type up top here. So you can choose quantity, you can choose value, or you can choose quantity and value. I usually choose quantity and value every time just because it allows me to see on the per line item basis that I'm adding what value is being adjusted as well. All right. So if I look at my item list here, so we're going to choose cabinet pulls for one. All right. First of all, I can add multiple items. So if I wanted to just add all my inventory items, I could. Um, if I wanted to search for certain items, I could search for certain items and it would only pull those. So let's see, search for widget. Okay. So it knows how it marks all of them and it'll add all of those to this column here. Notice that the adjustment date, depending on what you have here, it will adjust and update how many were on hand at that point. Okay. You can choose an adjustment account. Um, going to ask my accountant. If you're going backwards, you might want to stick it to ask my accountant so you can ask your accountant later, where should I put this? Should it affect equity for the history? Should it be running through the P&L? Do we need to go back and amend prior year tax returns? Okay, so usually sticking it to ask my adjustment is a good idea. Otherwise, you might have a uh, account on your in your expenses here for inventory adjustments you know, so that, you know, for spoilage or damaged goods, things like that. Um, or I have seen people run it through equity and then they true up equity uh, after the fact to the tax return. Okay. You can adjust it for a certain customer job if you want to. So if you know why you're adjusting this down, it's because a certain customer job had some damaged goods sent to them. You can do that. You can also assign it to a certain class. All right. So in here, uh, I want to adjust these cabinet poles so that they never go negative. So I'm going to choose 12, new quantity of 12 here. Oops, I'm sorry, a new quantity of zero here. So the quantity difference is 12. The new value is zero because I don't have it on hand, so I shouldn't have any values. You want to make sure that new value is zero. If you have some, you know, 0 0.037 amounts uh, as your average cost, or 0 0.048, you know, whatever it is, some kind of a lot of cents in there. That new value, even if you put it to zero, it could show up here as like negative 0 0.01. So you want to make sure if you're adjusting it to zero, the new value is also zero. Okay. So that being said, uh, I want to actually adjust it prior to it ever going negative. So I see here, I have all my negatives as of today. I know it went negative as of 8.30, so I'm actually gonna go back and change this to adjust it as of 8.1. 
I'm not going to adjust these guys for now. I'm going to go ahead and say save and new. So now if I look at my item list, okay, uh, let's get out of here, reopen my item list, go to my cabinet polls. Okay. Oh, I adjusted it. Notice here's another little quick trick. I adjusted it in the future or no, I adjusted it in the past. Let's see what happened here. Inventory adjustment, I adjusted it to zero. I see what happened. All right, so I adjusted it to zero as of 8.1, but really what I needed to do on this is adjust it to positive 12 so that I have the positive 12, the negative 12, and it never goes negative. So let me go back in and fix this. And we're gonna say 12 and say save and close. Now, when I look at it, it's going to adjust down to zero. Okay, so this is how, in order to get it so that it never goes negative, I had to adjust it up positive the amount that it ended up going negative. All right, now if we look at the transaction journal for this, I can see what happens is it's, it's uh, hitting my inventory asset, it's raising my inventory asset by $36, and it's also raising my, it's, it's, lowering my expenses by $36, okay? So it's actually extra income. So it's kind of saying, well, you got these inventory assets sort of for free or like, where did they come from? So that's actually other income. Okay. All right, so I can also, let's go ahead in here now and do it as of today. I'm gonna do a quantity and value on hand and we're gonna adjust it, uh, let's say out of whip. Let's pretend like WIP needs to be adjusted for some reason. Now, doing this is going to skew your WIP reports. It's not going to tie out to your uh, inventory valuation detail reports. So you might want to consider, are you really supposed to be adjusting to WIP? Most of the time, again, we adjust to equity or we adjust to something on the profit and loss. Okay, so no WIP. All right, so I'm going to just do opening balance equity. I'm going to add multiple items for widgets search for those, add selective. Uh, notice also that I can include an active there if I wanted to. Okay, so as of 1031, I had 198 on hand, but then I did my count and I really had 205 on hand. Okay, so it's gonna tell me that quantity difference is seven and the value difference based on average cost that we have already. So the new value is $205, and that's because they're valued at a dollar each, right? So notice that the total value adjustment is $7. So you just need to know that this is not saying, you know, what the new value, this is not $7 because that's the quantity difference. This is the new value for all 205 of those. All right, so on this one, base widget C, let's say we count and we had 100, and it's telling me that the average value is $6.66 or the new value for all 100 is $6.66 for those. But let's say that that's not correct. We really have, those are 50 cents each. So I'm gonna change the value to $50, okay? It's gonna update the average cost of the item, and then it's also gonna update the, the uh, value here. So we're also gonna say we have 10 of these on hand and just leave it, 10 of these on hand and leave it. Okay, so my total value adjustment is 2231.35. Again, you need to make sure that you are adjusting against the appropriate account because if you adjust against balance equity, uh, you know, that's going to be affecting your tax return. If you haven't, you know, if you've started a file and you've been using your file, you probably don't want to do it against opening balance equity. You're probably going to run it through the P&L. But again, you need to talk to your CPA or tax accountant bookkeeper about that. So that's how you adjust inventory.